This is a Science 10 review video for biology and genetics. Uh, genetics introduction, uh, starting off with Gregor Mendel, uh, who was a monk who studied pea plants. Hello, I'm Gregor Mendel. And uh, he did a few experiments with pea plants. In his first experiment, he took two short pea plants and bred them together. Uh, so, took a, two short pea plants, as is shown here, and you notice that all of the offspring were also short. Ooh, took short parents and got short offspring. Um, not too uh, stunning a result. Uh, he called these short pea plants true breeding, in which uh, the offspring were identical to the parent. Now, that was his first experiment. In his second experiment, he, no, he took tall pea plants, and he got two different cases. Uh, let's focus on them here. In the first case, he took two tall uh, pea plants, bred them together, and he got a little different result than before. Instead of all being tall, he would get proportionally three tall for one short. These were not true breeding. But he could also get some uh, pea plants that were both tall that were true breeding and all of their offspring would be tall. So, a little bit different result. Uh, we could see that if you have tall parents, there is no guarantee that you're going to be tall in terms of pea plants. However, if you had short parents, you were guaranteed to be short. Um, this started him thinking a little bit, and he then did a third experiment. In this third experiment, he took a true breeding tall and a true breeding short. All of the offspring turned out to be tall. So two true breeding plants, tall and short, and all of the offspring were tall. The short factor um, completely disappeared. Uh, the first generation here is known as P for parent, and, uh, the, and the first offsprings here are known as F1. Uh, we'll define some of these terms in a moment. Uh, going on with that experiment, if you took the, those offspring, uh, those F1 offspring, and you mated them together, brothers with sisters, sisters with brothers, but remember they're only pea plants, the shortness would reappear. Essentially, if you took true breeding tall and true breeding short, you would get non-true breeding talls as a product. And if you bred those together, you would get a similar case where proportionally you would get one short for every three tall. The shortness reappeared in the second generation. Now let's define some of these terms. Uh, parent generation will designate with a P, and that's the first uh, two parent plants. What's known as the first filial generation are the children or offspring of the P generation, and we tend to call those F1. If you take these offspring and you mate them together, uh, again, brothers and sisters, sisters with brothers, you get what's called the second filial generation or the F2 generation. And they are the offspring of the F1 generation. Now, what came out of this? Uh, Gregor Mendel reasoned that factors must be present for both tallness and shortness in uh, pea plants. If both are present, a uh, tall and a short, then the plant will be tall. This could explain uh, how it could skip a generation. Um, we now know these factors as genes, uh, also known as units of heredity. Uh, he didn't know about genes at the time. Of course, DNA had been discovered. How this all worked, we didn't really know. Uh, but he, for just from observing how this uh, traits occurred, appeared, disappeared, uh, he could see the effect of these genes on the organism. Now, some uh, def more definitions of words. Uh, the stronger trait, uh, for example here, tallness, would be known as the dominant trait. And that is the trait that masks other traits. If you have two traits present, the one that you see is the dominant trait. The recessive trait is the weaker or masked trait. And in pea plants, that would be an example uh, by Schnitz. Uh, we use uppercase letters to designate dominant genes and lowercase letters to represent um, the recessive 
uh, trait, uh, recessive gene. Uh, we use the same letter. So if we if our uh, trait that we're looking at is height, then we would use capital T for tallness, uh, since it is uh, the dominant trait, and a lowercase t for shortness, since it is the recessive trait. Uh, this is a pretty amazing achievement at the time. Uh, he lived at about the same time as Charles Darwin. At some point, they were contemporaries. Uh, but they didn't know of each other's work, uh, as far as people know. Um, it took a long time before people realized his theory of genetics was universal. And at that time, uh, everybody supported a, a theory of pangenesis, in which uh, body cells uh, shed things called gemules, which collect in the reproductive orders prior to fertilization. And so every cell in the body had a vote in the constitution of the offspring. Mendel's work actually showed that genes were fixed uh, inherited from parents. Uh, it didn't ha matter what happened to your cells afterwards. It was fixed from the time you were born. Um, this ended up uh, matching uh, the theory of evolution so well. I mean, once uh, Mendel's genetics came along and it could actually explain how traits were inherited, that could have disproved evolution in one shot. Uh, the fact that it didn't and that it confirmed it in great detail uh, is uh, one of the reasons why today uh, evolution remains one of the, the foundation of biology. To finish off this review video, just to review the laws of genetics that Mendel discovered. Uh, the first one was the law of segregation, in which uh, a pair of factors, which we now call genes, are segregated or separated during the formation of gametes, gametes being the sperm or the egg. So if you have a parent, as we have here, with a dominant and recessive gene, uh, this is a male uh, parent, uh, its sperm will divide up, and one sperm, 50% uh, will have the dominant, and 50% will have the recessive. Uh, don't forget your symbols. That means female. This means male. And we'll be using this throughout the genetics unit. As well, there was the law of independent assortment. Genes separate independently of other genes. I just switched that. Notice the spelling mistake. So what that means is that if you say have this organism that has, uh, we're considering uh, two different types of genes, uh, dominant and recessive. Uh, say this could be for brown eyes and blue eyes. Uh, and then another uh, pair of genes here. So we're con considering all in all. These will separate independently of each other so that we could have this gene uh, in one of the gametes with the other dominant gene, this dominant B with the lowercase. Um, we can have the lowercase B with the uppercase. You essentially get a random mixing of all the genes. Uh, they don't prefer one or the other. We now know the law of independent assortment is not strictly true, uh, but we will assume it to be true for the purposes of uh, this unit right now. Uh, this ends the review for Science 10. Uh, just a quick review of the terms and concepts introduced today on May 26th.